20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5. Welcome back on Cosmo. Today is part one of the Apollo 11 mission recreation. This week's challenge from KSP, it's week four, and it is Apollo 11. I'll be going for the Jeb level, which is recreating Apollo 11 and landing on the moon. Part one is going to cover the launch and the docking in low carbon orbit. Before we get into the more depth gameplay, I want to talk a little bit about the Apollo 11 mission. It is directly from NASA. I will link in the description below, and I'm going to read verbatim what this talks about. So the mission objective of Apollo 11, the primary objective of Apollo 11 was to complete a national goal set by President John F. Kennedy on May 25th, 1961 perform a crude lunar landing and return to Earth. Additional flight objectives included scientific exploration by the Lunar Module, or LM, crew, deployment of a television camera to transmit signals to Earth, and deployment of a solar wind composition experiment, seismic experiment package, and a laser ranging retro reflector. During the exploration, the two astronauts were to gather samples of lunar surface materials for return to Earth. They also were to extensively photograph the lunar terrain, the deployed scientific equipment, the LM spacecraft, and each other, both with still and motion picture cameras. This was to be the last Apollo mission to fly a quote-unquote free return trajectory which would enable a return to Earth with no engine firing, providing a ready abort of the mission at any time prior to the lunar orbit insertion. The crew for Apollo 11 was Neil Armstrong, he was the commander, Edwin E. Buzz Aldrin Jr., he was the lunar module pilot, and Michael Collins, he was the command module pilot. The backup crew was James A. Lavelle, Fred W. Hayes Jr., and William A. Anders. The payload was Columbia and Eagle. Eagle was the lander module and Columbia was the command service module. The pre-launch milestones, there's quite a bit. I would recommend going to the link in the description below to take it all of the pre-launch milestones. The launch happened on July 16th, 1969 at 9.32 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Launch Pad 39A, which is one of the most infamous, if not the most infamous, launch pad in the world. It is where everyone knows, and everyone really wants to launch a rocket from there, which I think was a humble and noble goal uh, to honor the past space explorers and keeping kind of that tradition of 39A being a unique and special launch pad. Uh, the Saturn V AS-506, High Bay 1, Module Launch, Launcher Platform 1, and Firing 1. That covered all of the launch. Its orbit reached an altitude of 118.65 miles. It was at an inclination of 32.521 degrees. Orbit's 
30 revolutions, duration of the mission, 8 days, 3 hours, 18 minutes, 35 seconds. Distance traveled, 953,054 miles. Lunar location, the Sea of Tranquility. Lunar coordinates, 0.71 degrees north, 23.63 degrees east. Landed in the Pacific Ocean on July 24th, 1969 at 1250 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The recovery ship was the USS Hornet. Apollo 11 launched from Cape Kennedy on July 16th, 1969, carrying Commander Neil Armstrong, Command Module Pilot Michael Collins, and Lunar Module Pilot Edwin Buzz Aldrin into an initial Earth orbit of 114 by 116 miles. An estimated 650 million people watched. Armstrong's televised image and heard his voice describe the event as he took one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind on July 20th, 1969. Beyond Apollo 11, the entire Apollo program had a few goals, and they were simple. There's four. Establishing the technology to meet other national interests in space, achieving preeminence in space for the United States, carrying out a program of scientific exploration of the moon, and developing human capability to work in the lunar environment. The flight mode, Lunar Orbit Rendezvous, was selected in 1962. The boosters for the program were the Saturn 1B for Earth orbit flights and the Saturn V for lunar flights. Apollo was a three-part spacecraft. The command module, the crew's quarters and flight control section, the service module for the propulsion and spacecraft support systems, when together the two modules are called CSM, and the lunar module, LM to take two of the crew to the lunar surface, support them on the moon, and return them to the CSM in lunar orbit. So that's a little history behind Apollo 11. Again, the link will be in the description below. It's from NASA. It's the history of the Apollo program, Gemini, Mercury, Explorer, early satellites, Voyager, and a whole bunch of history from NASA. It's a great resource to use. If you're just wanting to learn more about how they did things, what things we've accomplished, and where we're going. And it's good to stay in tune with our history, where we came from, how the past helped shape where we are today. Without Apollo, I don't think we'd be seriously considering, considering going to Mars. Now, this Apollo rocket, I did my best to recreate it, and I think it turned out pretty good. I was able to undock, let the lower stage, the rocket itself, just deorbit and successfully redock. Now there was a few bugs. Uh, I also, <laughs> so that spacewalk I did, I forgot that there was a, a guy in the lunar module. So I'm doing the spacewalk right here. He kind of bugs out. It was weird. I just walked down and I'm good to go. But I forgot that there was someone already in the lunar module. So I did this spacewalk and I was trying to figure out why he wouldn't go in the, the module. And then I realized, oh, it's because someone's already in the lunar module. So, kind of funny. I will say that today the EVA feels a lot better. Uh, other than that initial bug of like flying around on the side of the command module it was that was weird but overall i think it's turned out well i did clip a lot so a lot of this parts that go into the lunar module are clipped inside mainly the engines and fuel like all of it's very tightly packed in there to make it fit and resemble the lunar module i'm proud of it it's simple but i think it looks pretty good and the hardest part was getting the docking to work. Uh, this game, KSP2, just it doesn't have that feel that KSP1 has with docking. And I really enjoyed docking in KSP1. But KSP2, it just feels automated. It feels sluggish. And it feels like you can't stop your movement easily. You're just stuck in a spin. 
and if you lock on to your target obviously you're going to keep rotating and so I have to switch back and forth between the lunar module and the command module to get them to stabilize so they would dock together. Also lowering that acquired force really helped not jettison the lunar module away from me. It did kind of have a rough go there and I'm pausing because I want to make sure that I get things done quickly and not waste my time or all my fuel my mono propellant and here is a good way if you have two crafts with whether they're pilots like Kerbals or a guidance system you can just go to the tracking station and switch to the next thing get in control get it stabilized whatever you got to do it makes docking way easier so if you're docking to a, a spacecraft or something just make sure that both of them have a way to control it whether again it's a guidance system a probe or an actual Kerbal able to control it. Makes it way easier. So what I did is I got that command module to just be stationary and not be going all wild. And then I jumped in the lunar module and I used that to do the docking. Uh, so you can see Tim C. Kerman here just maneuvering the, mod the lunar module and getting a successful dock. So that was what we got done so far. And I look forward to dropping part two tomorrow. If you can, leave a like, share, comment, and I'll see you guys later.